In this video, I'm going to be looking at um, Genesis 4.26. Okay. Now, I have here, right here, this is a facsimile of the original 1611 King James Bible with all those funny words spelled um, like son, S-O-N-N-E, etc. Minus the Apocrypha, which uh, has no bearing on today's video. And what I want to share with you is that um, in the original 1611, the translators uh, put footnotes here and there. And on the footnote for Genesis chapter 4, verse 26, you will notice that it ties in with the idea of what I said in Calling Upon the Name of the Lord, part 2, how we are surnamed after uh, the Father. That is, uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not has been saved already, but shall be saved. Calling upon the name of the Lord is the same as believing on Him. Because they are so inextricably woven together that they cannot be um, taken apart. Calling upon Him is believing. Believing is calling upon Him. Now, the whole issue about a prayer, I'm going to handle that in another video. Um, these videos are going to be short. I'm going to be dealing with issues one by one. But let's look over. I'm going to read here. Um, in chapter 4, which would be... Um, Verse 26, it says, And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. And the footnote says, Or to call themselves by the name of the Lord. Now you say, well, that's just a footnote. And I understand that. But the Bible bears that out. We are baptized into one spirit, the Bible says. We are sons and daughters of the living God. Um, also, if you look over in Isaiah chapter 45, verses 3 and 4, it says, And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden tre riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel, for Jacob my servant's elect, and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Now, what happens is, as I've said so many times, error begats more error. And when people refuse to accept the truth that the sons of God in the Old Testament are people and not angels, they have perverted the words of the living God. I'm not going to go back and forth and debate with people on the matter. I have many videos on the subject. It is well established. I have scripture after scripture. And I'm simply not going to go over it again and again. Um, you can listen to the videos and ponder the scripture yourself and do as you please. But to, be, to call upon the name of the Lord is to be surnamed after his name. And uh, the Bible bears that out. Now, if you want to talk about prayer... Okay, that's a whole different topic. Okay, some people pray, some people don't. Um, I will get into another video the problems that I have with the sinner's prayer, um, and particularly the chick tracks. I'll discuss that in a brief video. But right now, I want you to understand that calling upon the name of the Lord is believing on Him. Um, the Bible is very clear unless. You don't have the education of a second grader, and you don't understand um, verb conjugation, okay? You have to, if you don't want to accept the verb congregation as it's presented in Holy Scripture, then you have to twist it like a hyper-dispensationalist, because that's who these people are. They're hyper-D. And they try to make it say something that it's not. Oh, well, that was written to Israel. Oh, this is only temporal salvation. This is that, the other, blah, blah, blah. No. Just like... Um, John 3.16, okay, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
It's the same whosoever over here in Romans. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Calling upon the name of the Lord is believing on him. And you are surnamed after him. And the translators of the King James Bible, who I would hold in much higher esteem uh, than Jesuit shields like Martin Richling, and those who follow his wicked, rotten path, um, I, would, I would look at their footnote and ponder very carefully because as I look through Scripture, I see that that bears it out as being true. So uh, you can get yourself a replica or a facsimile of the original 1611 King James Bible. See the footnote for yourself. It's right there. Um, quite simply, I'm going to read it one more time. Chapter 4, verse 26 footnote says, um, or to call themselves by the name of the Lord. They are now identified with Christ. They are identified uh, with Jehovah, uh, the creator of heaven and earth. Now, the question comes up, what about Abel? Abel was in the faith. That's obvious. He died, and he's, he's uh, quite known in Scripture. Uh, Hebrews... <sighs> Hebrews chapter 11... Verse 4, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. So people say, well, Abel died before men could call upon the name of the Lord. That point is moot, because the, name, the term calling upon the name of the Lord is not used everywhere. There are different uh, ways of saying believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, as I've said before. Uh, turning from your idols and turning into the true and living God. That's believing. Now, Abel was supposed to be the seed through which the Messiah would come. But Cain killed him. And so, Seth became that seed, the appointed seed through which the Messiah came. This lineage, this godly lineage, were the sons of God. And right away, people are going to disagree with me and say, Oh, no, 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 that's sons of God in the Old Testament or angels. Well, you can keep on believing those Gnostic lies, and I am not going to fellowship with you. Um, it is a very, very important doctrine, and to teach otherwise is putrid. And I make no apologies for it whatsoever. Um, I find that the pond I'm swimming in gets smaller and smaller every day anyways. So... For whatever time God has allotted me upon this earth, I'm going to stand for the truth. And the sons of God in the Old Testament are the righteous people who had believed on the Lord God and believed His Word as He spoke it to them. So, Seth was the appointed lineage, and we see through Scripture, bears it out, that through Seth, through Noah, on through um, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, so on and so forth through King David that um, Jesus Christ came through that lineage. And these people in the Old Testament are the sons of God. So, um, that is going to do it for this video. Until next time, God bless and take care.